Welcome back to our channel Mirror Neuron which means watch and learn and today we are going to talk about dot products all right so uh, this is the mathematical notation for uh, in this uh, playlist all right so before we actually jump onto this very simple concept um, typically we will see that um, so there is a vector a right and you will see a dot and then you will see a b right and in some of the note, uh, mathematical articles or any research paper you will see something like this a transpose b right and in some cases you might also see something like b transpose a and blah 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 <laughs> okay so now, uh, what I'm trying to explain here is that the dot product sim concept is actually so simple that uh, people, you know, use different notations to represent it. And that's what we are going to demystify here. All right. So, first of all, where, you know, if we see from our real world and we need to understand how this dot product uh, relates to that, right? So, we'll start with a very simple example and then we'll gradually transition that why in the world of deep learning and machine learning we in, even we use uh, you know dot product i mean you know what is the main purpose behind it okay let me try to explain okay so for example say you have a table ah I'm <laughs> okay nice drawing okay say you have a table yeah which is flat on the top right and you are trying to push it this way with a given force f so if you imagine in the world of physics then f is a vector right which is trying to push this table from left to right and after a while you know that the table will come somewhere here and i will interestingly teach you why you know we do dot product in our machine learning okay so now we know this, you know, and our table say moved a distance s, you know, during this process. So we know that from simple physics, you know, and if we have to represent it in a vector way, uh, by the way, the work done is a scalar value, so I should not actually put this, okay. Um, so you have f, which is a vector because why we are calling it as a vector because it has not only the direction but it also has some value here right and then we are giving it with a dot the distance that it has traveled usually we'll see a small d because we are talking about displacement here it was 0 here it was 5 so basically you get 5 minus 0 equal to 5 and that is given by the displacement yeah Okay, so far so good. Now, um, I am about six feet tall, right? And my table would be somewhere around, uh, say, three feet height, right? So, you know, I would not, you know, first of all, bend down three feet and then try to push it horizontally, right? So your actual picture might look something like this. So basically, you have the same table here, right? and here are the legs of the table and so on yeah and instead of pushing it horizontally what you're going to do is basically you will push it like this right because you know if you're a six feet tall person you are not going to bend down to three feet to push the table horizontally now the direction of the force became something like this right earlier it was horizontal but now the direction becomes like this Okay, so far so good. So if I just take the diagram of the force, then it appears something like this. And my table moved from this location to this location, right? Same as before. Okay, same as before. So now what we are talking about is that, you know, my force was not totally horizontal, rather it was uh, in, a, in a slanted way. So that means, there was a component which moved the table horizontally right and there was also a component which moved the table vertically 
and this angle is actually 90 degree right a very simple what do you call it representation in the world of vector so we had a real world scenario where we are trying to push a table first we were trying to push it horizontally so when we are trying to push it exactly horizontally there was no vertical component but when we tried to push it in a slanted way we get into two components and now what if this is my table right and if I push it directly this way is my table going to move or is my table going to move from this place to this place from real world we know that it is not going to do that and that's where you know this interesting dot products comes into picture so now forget about all this physical representation let's talk about this formula f is a vector and we are moving a certain displacement so when my force was horizontal and my table was moving in the same direction the angle between these two was zero wow okay <laughs> it's not so much brilliant here okay my table was moving this way but i made a vertical push it seems that this force when i was putting it vertically actually did not contribute in moving my table horizontally there could be possibly something else which must have given a push to my table in the horizontal direction that's why it might have moved but if i give only a vertical press you know press on my uh, table it will definitely not move, not move you can just you know go and try <laughs> in one of your tables right standard physics or day-to-day -day life but what if if i have a you know something like this then it definitely has two components one is in the horizontal direction and one is in the vertical direction okay now in real world if we have to now calculate what is the amount of work needed to move a table from one location to another location then how much work do i need to do is not given by this force f rather it is given by how much of this force is in the horizontal direction and interestingly we can calculate this and this angle is theta and this angle is 90 minus theta we know it from very basic mathematics right okay so we have this horizontal component we have this original force direction and then we have this vertical so we know that from the real world that if I put a vertical pressure on my table it is not going to move so that means my contribution is going to be zero and if I see my horizontal component which is theta then what you can do is a simple Pythagoras formula from this we know that cos theta is nothing but the base the hypotenuse and the perpendicular we know that your cos theta is equal to base upon hypotenuse right and it implies your base is now h times cos of theta yeah now if i extend this line like this I can say that this direction which is f of h this is my original f and this is my perpendicular so from that I can say that just plug this value so instead of b I'm going to plug the horizontal force is is equal to my original force times cos of theta right so this is the component in the horizontal direction all right so whenever we have a slanted push then that time our work done is going to be f of cos theta times the distance right and this is usually represented by a vector f dot product with the displacement vector s wow <laughs> all right now coming back you know 
to the horizontal option and why I'm going so much in detail in this fundamental concept is because you're going to use this dot product in in lot of places in machine learning like you know when you're talking about natural language processing you're going to use this dot product in attention mechanisms okay uh, when you're doing a convolutional neural network you're going to multiply your filter with your original image and that's where again you're going to do this kind of dot products and matrix multiplication so you're going to use this lot of time yeah and that's why I'm going so much in depth okay now if you realize so given we have this uh, work done and I know that I'm applying a force exactly in parallel to my table so in that case the angle between your force and your the direction your table is moving is basically they're parallel right and it's zero so what happens is whatever work you do it will be whatever force you put it is going to be used in moving the table completely right so basically you'll have cos of th now theta becomes zero times ds so basically your work done becomes ds that means you're in this complete equation the only variable factor that i can see is the cos of theta right which is nothing but the angle between your force right and the displacement direction the displacement what is in the horizontal direction right and the force so this angle is what we are in, interested in but what benefit are we looking at so we are saying that if an event f happens and here basically we are pushing a table then my table moves to a certain direction and if my theta is 90 degree that means if my force is in this direction if this was my original force and I wanted a displacement in the horizontal direction then in the real world it's impossible and in this particular case when the force is vertical your cos theta is nothing but cos of 90 degree right which is nothing but zero so basically no matter how much force you apply you are not going to get any displacement it is going to be zero all right so make sense now let's see how this concept of dot product is going to be applicable in our machine learning project let's take a simple example say um, you are um, you launched a new product right say you launched a new mobile and you want to you know put some advertisements on YouTube so your ads which is say in dollar amount and you want to see how much revenue you're going to generate so for example say uh, you are you have put three thousand dollar in a particular month for the YouTube ad and your revenue was say twenty five thousand dollar yeah say next month you spend some six thousand dollars in the ad revenue you hope you are hopeful that your revenue would also double up but you realize it's only twenty six thousand dollars and then you put say seven thousand dollars in the YouTube ads and your sale is again back to twenty five thousand dollars and so on now if you consider this if this ad revenue if I you know put an analogy with half which is my force and <clears throat> this uh, revenue as a distance you will realize doesn't it seem that my force is in the vertical direction and my revenue is in the horizontal direction that means there is a 90 degree angle between these two vectors which is my ads and this is my revenue it means that no matter what what amount of ads I'm putting I'm actually not moving my revenue at all now do you see the relationship you know why we use a dot product basically we want to see find this angle you know if it is 90 degree then we cannot expect in no matter what ad you put or how much ad you put in YouTube you are not getting any revenue and that is an interesting area where we use dot product a lot basically you want to calculate this angle times DS or in the above example I can say newspaper ad cos of theta times the sales revenue right 
see now now it makes sense right so this could be considered as a vector now here I have three values so it would be a three-dimensional vector I have three revenue values so it would be three dimensional revenue vector okay now that was from a vector perspective now the same thing can be done from a matrix perspective so if you note down the data so basically you can have another if I take another example say you are you went to a party and you know you went to a for a movie so you have three friends say f1 f2 and f3 yeah and um, you know you say for some event you uh, f1 bought two tickets and f2 bought three tickets and f3 bought four tickets yeah and the price of the price of the tickets say are all hundred um, dollars yeah so what is the total amount of uh, tickets you bought so you basically bought 2 into 100 plus 3 into 100 plus 4 into 100 right so basically total 900 dollars worth of ticket you bought right now what happens is in 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 mathematical notation form you know uh, you basically would have 300s here right and one would look horizontal and one would look vertical and this is just a uh, you know notation game nothing else so basically you have <coughs> one vector like this with another vector like this and the reason being the dimension the second dimension of this should meet or match with the first dimension so this will be one row into three columns because we had f1 f2 and f3 right and this one would be three rows by one so basically this dimension and this dimension should match in in the computer world also in the mathematics world in mathematics world we don't care we our brain is you know <laughs> smart enough to do this multiplication but in the computer world for the time being we will not go into too much of the detail but the notation you must have already got so this is f vector and this is a price vector so in order to multiply uh, a vector or matrix you typically would use f uh, transpose with p which is also equivalent to p transpose with f and it is nothing but f dot p the dot is important because if you remove the dot then you'll have to you know uh, put a notation saying transpose and something and in the very beginning I said that if we have two vectors with a dot product so it can be represented with a transpose B which is also equivalent to B transpose A and so on so now you see why we do you know dot product and why is it useful what sort of purpose do we solve using dot product and before we go away I'll quickly show say you have a uh, in the new in the world of neural networks so you will have say one neuron here and then you will have so many connections let's say these are inputs right and say you so this is x1 this is x2 and x3 right so here basically you have values x1 x2 and x3 and say it's a column vector and then for each of those uh, inputs we will have some weights right y1 w2 and w3 so basically you have w1 w2 w3 and you somebody must be saying oh we have a bias as well okay so we have a bias <laughs> okay so if I have to mathematically write this what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say x transpose tw plus the bias term right that will be the output in this place which is usually z right so now you see why you we use a dot product so basically if I use a notation in the you know uh, vector form then I will say x dot product with w plus v oh, I, it's usually a scalar so I don't need to put a vector form but if I say a, a column vector I it would not be that wrong so I can just say b vector but if I have to remove this vector notation then if I have to write it in a pure mathematical notation not the vector one then I'm going to just say your output z is going to be x t w which is the weight vector plus b okay and if it was a ma in a matrix form then you would say x t 
W. Usually matrices are given by bold X, right, and capital letter with capital letter W, right, plus the B. Okay. I hope this gives you the complete understanding about why we use dot product and how this notation comes into place. So the next time you read an article, you now know how to comprehend this. All right, I hope um, I was able to give some uh, little bit extra information you could find and hope this is helpful for your uh, reading mathematical articles. Until then, you take care and please take your time to subscribe this channel and support us. Thank you and have a nice day.